Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, July 30th, 2023. Let's get into it. Woohoo! Man, I'm going to tell you what, we have had some major geopolitical events take place. Good God, in the last, uh, well, four or five days, man. Uh, I don't think many people, it's certainly not being reported on in the West, but what just took place with these African nations meeting in St. Petersburg was huge, huge ramifications. I mean, I, Russia is now conducting the war against the United States empire in many locations. I mean, and of course, I'm sure China's on board with this and Iran's on board with this. You know, I tell you what, man, unless we're going to go nuclear, I don't see us coming out on the, the good side of all of this. Let's just get into uh, what I've been tweeting about because, you know, I just want to read some of these. So I'll start with the last tweet first. So I'm kind of working my way backwards. So continuing my analysis of the African summit in St. Petersburg, Russia will step up efforts to bypass the Suez Canal through Iran. This solidifies, uh, this solidifies relations between Africa, Iran, and Russia, increasing India's investments in Africa, continuing development of the South Transportation Corridor, which is going to be a huge, huge alternative to the Suez Canal. And uh, also, uh, they're talking about Iran uh, becoming a BRICS member, along with uh, the, the, the original BRICS members, of course, now. So, that, so we had 44 nations that are going to be BRICS members. Now that makes 45 uh, if you include North Korea, I guess that would be 46. Uh, this is the, I tell you what, man, the next three months are going to be intense as far as the world, uh, bipolar world, as the world realignment takes place. This is amazing to watch. Oh, my God. So let's get to, uh, let's get to what came out of the South African conference uh, because I wanted to point this out to people. And I don't think, uh, you know, it's not being reported on in the West. You're not going to hear about this anywhere. I haven't even seen a YouTube channel cover this. But let's let's go down uh, piece by piece, and I'm just going to tell you what, what came out of this thing. I had no idea that, that so much was discussed and so much was accomplished. Of course, all the groundwork had been laid for months and months, starting back, I think, last April. And so, really, this was just all the uh, meeting, all the leaders getting together or delegations and just solidifying everything they've been talking about for months and months. Uh, but let's look at the results of this thing. Africa, St. Petersburg Summit, game-changing geopolitical results. Game-changing geopolitical results. Holy moly. 49 African delegations out of 54 African nations went to St. Petersburg. Now, you might want to say, well, oh, they didn't get all the African nations. That's because the West was leaning on every damn country in Africa, telling them that you don't go to St. Petersburg or we're going to sanction you. We're going we're gonna to torture you. We might just nuke your country out of existence. And yet they went anyway. 49. Now, out of those, I think there was only 17 uh, African leaders, I think, that attended. I'm not, don't quote me on that number. But, uh, but the delegations, I mean, they're, they're still high-ranking officials that attended this thing. So what was discussed? Well, the first one is de decolonization. That was a huge conference that took place. And that means removing Western influence, Western colonization influences from Africa. So there was a huge discussion on how they're going to kick the French out and the United States out and Great Britain out. Those are your three main colonial powers in, uh, in Africa. Uh, and so you've got 49 countries saying, we don't want the West in Africa no more. Holy moly. Oh, let's keep going. Possible BRICS adoption in September. Uh, and that's so it looks like Africa. Uh, well, we already knew that, like I said, 44 nations are going to be at this BRICS uh, thing. Uh, what is it? August 22nd, I think, is the exact date. Uh, but then I, I'm not sure. Well, September is when I think Iran and some other countries are going to meet. Anyway, let's just keep going. Russia requests Africa to become a permanent member of the UN Security Council. Now, is it going to happen? I don't know. But think about the political win that Putin just pulled off. He told the African leaders, hey, man, I want you to be a permanent member of the UN Security Council. And you know the West is going to come up against it. And that's going to piss Africa off even more. That's going to get them closer to China and Russia and Iran and North Korea. You know, and so and then Russia even proposed again. He said he Russia, Putin might as well just call him Putin. He wanted uh, he's told the Africans he wants them to be a permanent G20 member. So now not only is he saying you need to be on the Security Council and it's not fair that the West keeps you off of that, he's also saying that you should become a G20 member. Now think about it. If you're an African leader and you're saying, well, you know, Russia's, um, 
They're on our side, man. They're on our side. These are huge political victories, huge political victories. Oh, my God. Then, then Russia turned around and erased $23 billion in African debt, which means Africa has no debt to Russia anymore. Do you think a Western nation, uh, let's say J.P. Morgan Chase, would ever erase $23 billion in African debt? I mean, I, that's, I, and so, which means they owe zero, zero. And then, oh, it just goes on and on. Wait, wait, let's just keep going. Free grain for six African nations. The rest will get grain cheap, the ones that can afford to pay something for it. Well, Russia had a bumper crop this year, and so they can afford to give away grain. So they're going to make sure I, Europe ain't getting no damn grain. I can guarantee that. Nothing's coming out of Odessa no more now that the grain deal is dead. But Africa, Africa's going to get plenty of grain from Russia. Unbelievable. I mean, these are just huge geopolitical uh, events that are taking place. Oh, my God. Let's go. And then, of course, free trade. They, uh, Russia's uh, negotiated all kinds of trade deals with all kinds of African nations. Uh, basically, you guys setting up a, a like a free trade uh, uh, alignment uh, between them, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. Uh, let's just keep going. Oh my goodness! Closer African and Asian ties uh, for trade. We already just talked about that in the last one, but I mean, you got to see that, that that they're moving more east. Uh, they're getting away from from Africa's going to be, you know, Europe, man. You're going to be hurting, man. I mean, we're going to get more into the French situation here in just a minute. Uh, of course, they're bringing in North Korea. Now, if you didn't know, um, uh, what, what, what's, what's the Russian guy, Shrogu? Anyway, he was in uh, North Korea. What a reception. Red carpet, the whole deal. Uh, and so what they're trying to do is bring uh, North Korea into this whole uh, alliance and, and trade uh, arrangement and everything uh, and provide them with uh, more um, uh, uh, military capability. Uh, then, of course, uh, we've got the... Um, the coup in Niger, uh, bringing them into a Russian partnership. Niger is, wants to be a, a partner with Russia, the new government anyway. Uh, and we're going to get more into that uh, later in this video. And then, of course, um, if you did not know, I mean, I'm sure that you probably heard in the Western news how Prigozhin was marching on Moscow uh, not too long ago and, uh, and how that whole situation came about. But guess who was at the conference? Prigozhin! <laughs> told you it was a psyop. I told you it was a psyop. Nobody wants to pay attention to that cybersecurity guy. Anyway, he was there. And uh, so we can expect the uh, Wagner presence in Africa to increase. Uh, and I'm sure that was negotiated. Now, do I have 100% evidence of that? No, I do not. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the continued development of the road, uh, rail, and sea infrastructure. And uh, we're going to get into that in the next tweet. So let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, okay, well, I guess I, 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 maybe it wasn't a tweet. It might have been a reply. But India is, uh, they're going to be, they've been uh, cheap. They, they have, were working on uh, one of the African ports to bypass the Suez Canal. And uh, India has agreed to, uh, to put more money into that uh, project. Now, whether, whether they do it or not, who knows? But still, I mean, that was, a, that was an agreement that came out of the conference. So India was there in, in token representation. I'm sure China was there in some fashion. Uh, you got all of Africa there. Uh, let's just keep going. I mean, this 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 thing just keeps. I, I mean, it's 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 huge. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's it. This was um, one guy, uh, and I totally agree. I mean, I I don't know where Europe what drugs they're smoking, man. I mean, it's totally reckless and unprecedented to defuel a, a fossil fueled world that eight billion people depend on without a replacement. We're seeing a microcosm microcosm of that in Europe. Yeah, look at Germany right now. Now that the United States blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, I mean, talk about deindustrializing the nation. Germany is going to be hurting. I mean, I if that government stays in power with Schultz, I, I'm going to be absolutely shocked. I tell you what, I I, I just don't see how that situation can go. Then I, I get on to uh, Syria. Now, the other front to the war. What is going on in Syria? Now, I know that Wagner uh, is, they're sending more uh, Wagner troops to, to Syria and that the war is heating up down there. And so I, I predict, now I'm predicting, uh, and predictions are always wrong, but uh, I think that they're going to take back those oil fields. We've only got a very limited presence. Now, we did send F-35 fighters uh, to aid our forces in Syria, but how, how, how thin can you spot? we got 144 bases around the world, and we're fighting, uh, we're going to fight China. We've got uh, bases we're building in the Philippines. 
uh, you know, we've got my uh, troops in Syria. You know, we're, how many fronts can you fight a war on? I, I don't know. The United States seems to think that they're going to fight the whole damn world. Um, so let's just keep going. Uh, I got, this is a results of a poll that I've got up. Do you think Mark Milley, the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, dude in place, uh, is A, incompetent, B, a traitor, C, excellent, or D, stupid? Right now, the poll stands at 60% traitor, 20% excellent, and 20% stupid. I love these polls, man. I think they're pretty fun, uh, you know, because I, I, I know where I vote on that, traitor. But, you know, that's, that's just me. Um, let's keep going. Uh, wow, man, I tell you, I put up a video. You got to check it out. Patriotism defined. Uh, it was a huge thing that took place. And by the way, there's a, there's a, in South Africa, uh, there was a huge event, just like the one that I put up for the event that took place in Russia. And they were all waving Russian flags. And it was, I mean, it was a, a, a huge uh, stadium full of people and everybody was cheering. And the same thing took place in uh, South Africa. And then in Niger, right now, you've got, uh, I don't know, thousands of people that have surrounded the French embassy. If it's not burnt to the ground within the next couple of days, I'm going to be surprised. Let's just put it that way. So now you, and so the French, I mean, what are they going to do? They got internal, well, let's get into the French stuff here in just a minute. All right, I'm, I don't want to get, um, uh, uh, that's it for the tweets. Um, Let's see. Uh, well, and I said in the video yesterday that Carrie Lake is now the number one rap artist in the United States. 81 million votes my ass. 81 million votes my ass. And then I tell you what, that's a great video. Check it out. I don't even know. It'd probably be taken down off of YouTube. I don't, I don't think they'll leave it there, but you can probably find it on Rumble. Um, let's get into the replies. So I was been working on these. Um, uh yeah, and I've talked about Syria already. Uh, by the way, there was a uh, huge battle took place. I, how in the hell they got it on video? I don't even know, man. But it was a Russian tank, and he was sitting up on top of a ridge, just right place, right time. And there was a Ukrainian column that was moving along, and uh, and they filmed the whole damn thing. And uh, he, the tank took out the whole freaking column. I mean, I, I'm not for death and destruction. In fact, I want peace. I want peace. But the West don't want peace. But anyway, and uh, and so it was just an amazing battle. Talk about courage under fire. They went up against a superior force and, and never backed down. Um, that tank could have been destroyed. I, I, those guys were, were truly uh, amazing to watch. Um, yeah, I already talked about, you know, when, when is Syria going to take back the oil fields? Here's another tweet. Um, Push, Pushlin instructed to the reward, reward the crew of the tank. So they, they should be getting awards here. Uh, shortly, um, they were in the right place. Oh, this is this was the uh, the article as to why I know what's going on in Nigeria. Uh, this is from uh, Zag Zag Z A G A Z O L A, uh, and it says Nigeria has just suspended export of uranium and gold to France this Sunday with uh, immediate effect. France, what are you going to do for energy? I mean, you're dependent on your nuclear power plants, right? And of course, your gold, a lot of your gold comes from Nigeria. I, this, I mean, you've already got internal strife with all your illegal aliens. You know, your own populace is burning down your country. How in the hell is Macron going to hold on? I don't know. You tell me. Maybe he will. I, you know, just send the police, the uh, military in there and just start, start shooting French citizens, I guess. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, so what my, my tweet was, boy, is France on the ropes now. <laughs> and internal strife with thousands of illegal aliens, a failing economy. And now limited uranium power to their plants. Holy moly. Uh, and then, of course, then you got Macron declaring readiness to defend French in Niger. Good luck, Macron. What are you going to do? I mean, the whole damn nation's up against you. you you're going to send... And what are you, you going to do to keep control of your own country? You know, your country's burning down and you're, you're worried about Niger. Oh, my God. These Western globalist lunatics are something else, aren't they? Holy moly. Um, let's see... Um, yeah, I already got that. Uh, I want to see if there's any more um, replies. Oh, that, this was a good one. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to read it, and then I'll give you my commentary on this. PMC Wagner is a product of the information war, and many fall for its glorification. 
In reality, this is a very weak unit and it does not pose any threat. Deployment of PMCs in Belarus is not worthy of attention, the Estonian intelligence chief. Should I read that again? Because <laughs> I'm just... Did, didn't we just see Wagner take back back boot? What? No? No? I, I, you know, I, I seem to think Wagner's a, Wagner's a pretty uh, intense force to be feared around the world. But the Estonian intelligence chief is telling you that, oh, no, they're nothing, man. We're not worried about them. I tell you what, if Estonia doesn't cease to exist, uh, I'm going to be surprised. Uh, if they breed, they, they, and then my, my comment was, boy, they breed them stupid in Estonia. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's see. A black man is running for president in the Green Party, which is how the Dems treat him. Not sure what that was about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, strange he made a very broad brush when start stating Democrat. I wonder why you didn't say some Democrats. Yeah, yeah, this was somebody that was saying that I, t I, I put all Democrats in the uh, stupid category. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. They are for open borders. They're for child trafficking. They are for uh, spending the United States into oblivion. They are... Uh, for the war in Ukraine, they're a warmongering lunatics, they're totalitarians, they were all for the COVID mandates, they were all for locking down every uh, Democrat place in the United States. Did I go on about the Democrats? Yes, all Democrats. Now, are there rhino Republicans? Oh yeah, most definitely. So we gotta, we gotta get them both up. Uh, but, but I include all Democrats in that category. I'm just putting it out there for you. Um, I guess that's about it. So let's uh, let's get, finish up the video. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, or tell that Democrat writer, that rhino rambler. That nuclear war gambler, that backbiting United States politician, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Say hi, boo. Hi, boo.